Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I am talking to an old friend today, you guys, and I couldn't be more excited to have her here. It's long overdue, honestly. Uh, But Laura Templeton is going to come on and tell us about AI. And I know I did an episode on it, I guess back maybe 2023. And I'll link that episode in the show notes as well, just for another perspective. But we're going to talk about today the, the ways that you can use AI but use it to your advantage. So we're not talking about going to AI and just copying and pasting what they produce for you, but we're going to be talking about how you can actually use it in a way that makes your life easier, sounds like you, and then edit in a way that is less time consuming and you're spending way less time overall creating your content and it still has the value that you need it to have to connect with your soulmate clients, your ideal audience. Welcome to the Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. So without further ado, Laura Templeton, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to to catch up with you, Robin. It's been too long for sure. (laughs) It's been too long. So listeners, something we have in common is at about the same time, I think we bought our house a little bit before you did, but we both love Florida and Laura is in Florida now and I'm in Pennsylvania, but it is hot and sunny here today. So I'm not going to complain. But anyway, we have that love of sunshine in common, which is always so nice. And she is like a ray of sunshine coming through the screen at me right now. All right, Laura, with that, all that being said, I get a little geeky. Um, Tell us a little bit about your journey and what brought you to where you are today. Um, You know, Robin, you and I have known each other for so long and I feel like I'm like my journey has, it continues to evolve. Right. And that's what, I think that's what true entrepreneurship is really about, right. Still Mm -hmm. being in that evolutionary period. It's also part of just life. Right. And I think the the biggest and most beautiful thing, and I was just sharing with you, which was I did not realize you did not know, my corporate journey was all about construction project management, helping people, you know, like really we were building buildings and I was working closely with the marketing team and, you know, it was a team effort to have get the construction done. Right? And so I took a lot of what I learned in that field, you know, 10 years in that field before I became a stay-at-home mom and re- to raise my two children you know, I took a lot of what I learned there, applied it to life, and and then I got to apply it to business. I stepped into network marketing when my kids were young. I went to school when, with my kids when they were little. Um, proverbial teacher, I love teaching. I always wind up, no matter what organization I'm a part of, I always wind up being at the front of the room for some reason. Um, and yet, like we were talking about earlier, I understand what it's like to be someone who is somewhat introverted when it comes to being in large, large groups, right? Really, really being part of the crowd, right? I like to figure out how I fit in and then how can I help others in that role? And a lot of times that comes to teaching. So I took a lot of what I learned. I stepped into a leadership role with a networking organization. And I, and in that capacity, I started to really look at my members. And I started looking at the members from the perspective of what do they need? How can I help them? And what, Kept bubbling up to the surface is who can teach us how to do our 30 second message. You know, that I watched way too many amazing women just literally fall apart when it was time for them to do their 30 second message. And I started teaching because I couldn't find anybody else to teach it. I could de- find people to teach networking, but not the 30 second message, right? Because what I found was in that 30 second message, it was really about helping them find their confidence, getting clear on their messaging. So fast forward, like I'm almost 10 years into this business at this point in time. And about a year and a half ago, I really started to embrace ChatGPT because I saw the benefit of creating content, really working, you know, helping me to edit and crunch the content that I was creating for my clients, for myself. And it became a very powerful tool in my arsenal because as you know, moving to Florida, you don't want to be stuck inside all day long. (laughs) You want to be outside enjoying the sunshine. Like I do not want to be at my desk 24 seven. And I started really seeing how powerful the tool of using ChatGPT could really benefit myself, benefit my clients, help people get their time back and to be more efficient. 
And I started teaching other people how to use it, how to customize it to sound more like them, to have their voice, because that's the number one reason people avoid using chat GPT. I have done numerous surveys and I ask people all the time, why don't you like using chat GPT? If you avoid using chat GPT, why is that? Most of the time it's because it doesn't sound like me. So I started teaching people how to customize ChatGPT. There's a very, you know, there's a very simple tool within the, uh, the ChatGPT platform where you can create these custom instructions. Many people don't even know it's there. And I started teaching how and, and what to put in those custom instructions. So it really sounds like you and resonates with who you are. And that became, uh, you know, the gateway into teaching people through master classes and my course. And then I, I launched my book, Stand in Your Brand, to harness the power of AI for brand success, efficiency, and client attraction. So that's where we're at now. And I'm, and I'm enjoying teaching people. It's just been amazing to have this experience and to open up people's eyes and their minds to embracing ChatGPT kind of as like their virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And you make it sound so great and so easy. So <laughs> I I have to say, I've only used it a couple of times. And one is because I was afraid, I, I'll admit that it wasn't going to sound like me. And it what was really funny, and I told you this before we hit record was, I, the one time I did it, I'm like, wait a second, I've said that before. Wait a second. I wrote that in a blog post. Wait a second. That's on my homepage. And it was so funny to see like, okay, I guess what I'm saying is legit, right? So there's this little bit of reassurance when this big, huge thing of data comes back to you and it's solidifying your thoughts and beliefs, which was kind of funny. But with that being said, I, I break everything apart and I make it my own. Like I'm so afraid of this copyright infringement or sounding like someone else. So there's multiple levels there. One, we want to sound unique as our own personal brand, especially as entrepreneurs, but we also don't want to have that copyright infringement. So there's a couple different things when we think about pulling this data to then use as our own. So tell us your thoughts on that. Like how do we avoid both of those scenarios? I think the well, number one is again um, going back to that custom instructions piece of making sure that chat understands who you are, who you serve, what your voice is, what your values are. How do you like to write? Is it short form, long form? Um, are you quirky? What's your personality? Really helping chat understand who you are and how you speak, right? And then who your audience is. Making sure that that is programmed into ChatGPT so it has a better understanding of the content that you are trying to create and the audience you are trying to reach. So by, by creating this custom instruction, you can do that. The other thing that I coach people all the time is don't just cut and paste. Number one, make sure, you, make sure you read it. If it sounds like you, you still need to edit it. You may need to add a call to action. You may need to add maybe a simple story, um, edit it. I, I use the 80-20 rule. Use 80% of what ChatGPT has given you. Make sure that the other 20% is you and you alone, right? Making sure that you are, you are buttoning it up so it really hits the mark, that it really resonates in your soul before you are sharing it with the world. Don't just cut and paste. And, you know, that's where a lot of people get into that, you know, the muddy water of, of copyright infringement, right? Because I, uh, I have a story where I know someone when ChatGPT first came out, it's a marketing company that got sued because they created content, put it on one of their client's websites, and the client got called out on it. So the client and the marketing agency got sued because they literally used content that was already on someone else's website. They didn't take the time to really massage it, make sure that it was, you know, really tailored to that specific client. And, and you know, so that happens. It happens. So just be be mindful of what you're, if something sounds really, really brilliant, put it, go to Google and Google it and say, you know what, can you see, you know, like just verify this, where did this come from? Um, you know, because we have to understand ChatGPT number one, it's ChatGPT 3.5 is closed source. So anything that's been put into ChatGPT 3.5 was verified and submitted by humans. Humans make errors, right? It's, it, it's, it's the way of life. We make errors. So no matter how many people have checked and checked and checked and checked the work, 
there could be errors there. So, but then ChatGPT4 is open source and it can go out to the internet and grab content. So make, because it'll, like I get a lot of times I do some references, like I look for references or I'm looking for statistics and I will use Chat4, which is a paid version to grab some of those statistics. And, and it will always, and it should always give you the source, right? You want to make sure that it gives you the source, where did it get it from? So you can actually, again, if you're using that content, make sure you are giving the source um, to, so that credit goes where credit is due. And that's that's the most important thing to remember that if you are working in chat and you've got a lot of content, make sure that it's accurate. But again, the most important thing is editing it to make sure that it it is true and factual about the work that you do and speaks to your soul. That's hands down, that's the best way to protect yourself from being caught in a situation um, like the marketing agency did. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important too, to know whether or not it resonates with your soul, but also with your clients. Like, does it sound like you want to sound because your personal brand is that perception that they have of you. So what you're putting out there needs to be consistent with everything you've put out there before. And so it was curious because as you were talking, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if it provides references, but you answered that. So the paid for, and one of my other questions was the cost of chat GPT. So there's the free one and the free one is what you said, you said open source. No, closed, closed source. source. The closed free source. one is um, ChatGPT 3.5, which is closed source. Closed source. And it you don't get references with that. So you would need to double check anything that you pulled from there. Then the ChatGPT 4 is a paid version, but it does give you references. Are there other differences between the paid and the non-paid versions? Well, the ChatGPT 3.5, even though it's closed source, will still give you statistics and um, content from other sources. So it will give you source codes, um, but it, a lot of it is old information mm. right? because it's only been updated to April of 2023 at this point. Oh. So like if I'm looking for statistics, I'm not going to look in 3.5 because most of it's from 2019, 2020, and things have changed drastically since then. Mm-hmm. So I will use chat four for statistics and that's why it'll go out to the internet and get most more current information. Um, the other two, the other big thing and chat GPT four, it's $20 a month. It's, it is worth the investment because I think the other, the other benefit, especially if you're going to be using it a lot. Um, number one, chat GPT, chat GPT four users actually get bumped up in the platform so that say there's a ton of people using chat GPT at the same time. Um, and it gets overloaded, uh, paying members obviously get preference, right? That makes so sense, yeah. You, yeah, you'll, your content will come back quicker. Things will it'll move a little bit faster. Whereas in the three, five version, it might move a little bit slower. The other thing to remember is the intelligence of three, five and four, it, it, which is really drastically different. Chat GPT three, five is at an IQ of 60. And that's, that's like an average human, right? Which really surprised me that that number is as low as it is for average human. But yeah, when chat GPT 5 or chat GPT 4 is at 155 and Einstein was a 160. So, you know, you're talking a much higher IQ level. So the content measurement on IQ level is higher in chat GPT 4. They're saying by the time we have chat GPT 5 or 6, it's liable to be like 3,000 which I'd be blown away if it were. Um, wow. But it's not surprising because think of all the knowledge we've accumulated and now it's learning, right? It's learning what people are expecting, the expectations. It's it's learning what people are asking it for. Um, I don't know if there's, there are some amazing uh, people that are out there do, testing and constantly trying, you know, the, the asking for different levels of, of communication. Um, just for instance, I know that there are people that are asking it to write uh, write papers in a very specific format, and it's coming back in that format. It understands what those formats are, mm-hmm. right? So it's making sure that you. But then again, you have to you have to verify the content, right? Don't just accept it at its word. Mm-hmm. And, and think of it like when we were in school, uh, when you and I were in school, and we had to write a paper. Right. We had to know where all that information was coming from. Our teachers wanted us to, you know, make the notes of where we got all of all, all of our information from. And we could not 
copy word for word out of a dictionary or a, a textbook encyclopedia. of some sort. <laughs> encyclopedia. Oh my gosh. You thought you could get one over on the teacher and it never <laughs> happened. Well, you have to make sure you do the same thing, verify and make sure that it's not coming. Like it's not sounding, it's sounding like it has to sound like you, not like somebody else wrote it. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I think that's the most valuable thing to remember. So let's real quick, what are some of the ways people can use this? So if they've been sitting there thinking, oh, I'm hearing all this, like me, you know, all of this AI, this AI, but I like to write. So, and it doesn't take me that long to write. So I tend to just write my own and I don't have to worry about anything, right? But yeah. when you're, what you've explained is that it can speed up your content creation process. It can speed up your writing process. It could speed up like online course creation and all these things. So what are some of the things that you're using it for or that it can be used for that would save business owners, time, energy, money? I think the biggest thing to remember that you can, any kind of content that you're creating, whether it's creating a course, creating an outline for a book, creating, I tell people, don't use it to write your book, please. Although I used a good bit of it to write my book because my book happens to be about chat GPT and AI. Um, but using it for outlines, like if you're stuck for an outline, right? You want to, or you're in the middle of creating a class and you want to make sure that all you have everything that you want to highlight it's a great way to create an outline. It's a great way to create references. It'll even, you know, if you're creating, you can create a course with it. You can ask it for video scripts. You can ask it for like a video outline and, you know, just bullet points of things that you want to talk. I don't know about you, but when I create, when I do a video, I don't go off a script. Bullet points are very helpful to make sure that I get everything in there, mm -hmm. but not a script, right? The other thing too, like when you're creating a presentation, you want a slide deck, it'll give you an out ideas for creating a slide deck for a presentation. I've, you know, used it, I've taken it and asked it to create my, you know, help me create my, my presentation, just outline my presentation, give me slide deck. It, it, when you ask it to create presentation, I'm getting all excited. So my, my tongue's working faster than my brain is. Um, <laughs> So when you ask it to create a presentation, it will we'll auto, almost every time automatically give you ideas for what the slides should look like. Oh, right? wow. So you, yes, yes. So like how many times have you wanted to do a presentation and yet you go to create the slides and you're like, I, I don't know what to put on these slides. Uh-huh. Right? There are a lot of people who are not, like I'm a very visually oriented person, but there are a lot of people who are not and they struggle with, what, what should my slide deck look like? Right. So that's the other piece. And then a lot of, you know, you've got AI built into Canva now. So you can pull that presentation outline into Canva and Canva will help you. Their AI will help you create that slide deck almost immediately. It's amazing mm -hmm. what you can do when you start to marry the things that you're getting out of ChatGPT to other platforms. Like, okay, Put it in Canva, ask it to create the slide deck because you've, now you've got the outline of what you're creating and it's just so helpful. There are so many different things. Just think about it in this way. If there is something that you could either A, hand off to your VA or B, wish you could hand off to your e a, your VA, chances are ChatGPT can help you. And it's just, I look at it from the perspective that anything that's going to make my life free up my time, make my life easier so that I can enjoy life. I, I, you know what? I'm looking, you know, I just had a big birthday this year in April, right? <laughs> Happy birthday. Numbers, thank you. Numbers don't go down, right? So we have to, our time is something we can't get back. Mm -hmm. And too many business owners and entrepreneurs get stuck in the minutia of the daily grind of creating content that's keeping them from serving people. Right. So think about it, even from the perspective of if you are a coach or a business, it, or if you're developing a product, you can ask AI to help you with that. Right. Give me some ideas about a product that my ideal client would find helpful. It's amazing what you find out when you ask ChatGPT and you ask it, okay, let's create my client avatar. Here's who I think, here's who I work with. Here's how I help them. Here's what I do. Who would be a great person? For and then start asking ChatGPT to say, okay, what am I, what am I, I do clients asking? 
what what are their what's keeping them up at night? What's you know what are the frequently asked questions that they're asking Google and they're asking YouTube? What are they searching on? And all of a sudden, all it becomes very clear on what you should be putting out for your ideal client as opposed to what you think you should be putting out for your ideal client. Mm -hmm. Do my ideal clients need to hear more about creating their 30 second message or do they really need to hear more about how to be consistent in building a brand game changer in your business? Mm -hmm. It really is. Cause your 30, like for me, my 30 second message is all part of all part of that brand communication, right? It's just one of the ways that I get people to, oh, yes, I need help with my 30 second message, but they don't realize that it's brand consistency. It's your overall messaging. It's your visual brand and your verbal brand tied together. Mm -hmm. 30 second success is how I get them to go, what's that about? But then we can have a deeper conversation. So what is it that they need to hear in order to get them to to be interested in hearing a little bit more from you. So when you can start to use chat to help you understand your clients more deeply, you better results in what you're putting out to the world. So, okay. So you said so many things there, but so I have a couple of questions. One is what, what do you type into the search bar on chat GPT? Do you say like, for me, most of my clients, are in the health and wellness space. So they're health coaches, life coaches, therapists, counselors, you know, they're in the healthcare practitioners, they're in the health and wellness space. So would I type in what are health and wellness providers searching for or what do so, they need? Like what what do you put in so that you get the right answers? Great question. Great question. So first of all, I would program into the custom instructions who your ideal client is. So you don't have to ask that question. You say so you don't have to add that information every time you ask chat a question. Okay. Oh, okay. So once it's in the custom instructions, then you're going to ask, you're going to in the prompt say, you know, um, outline, give me five different ideas of posts that uh, or five different posts. You can actually actually ask it to create five different posts for social media, right? Give me a week's worth of posts for social media around this topic that will help my ideal clients accomplish X, right? And I always say, make sure that you have a call to action that directs them to my podcast or my blog right. or where, yeah, make sure, because it won't yeah. automatically put a call to action in there. So that, you know, so you can, and you can give it as much detail as you want, right? You know, and, but before you even do that, say, okay, here's, here's who it's your custom instructions understands who your ideal client is. So then you can type in, okay, um, I want to do, you can actually tell chat, say, I'm going to do more research around what my ideal clients need from me. I know their lives are changing, our economy is changing. How can I serve them best? What are the things that they are asking for help with? Right? Be very specific. You could think ChatGPT as a conversation. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why they call that whole thread conversations. Oh, and, and by the way, I have a YouTube channel that can, uh, that actually, my I, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel that goes into, that has tips for using ChatGPT and it'll show you how to save those conversations so you don't lose them. Oh, um, cool. And, and I also talk about renaming them so that they're easier to, to scroll through and find, because you know, I don't know about yeah. you, but I go back and build on conversations. I don't just start a new conversation. I'll go back and find an old one. If I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm still working on this. Let me go back and, and build on it. Maybe there's another thread or I might ask it. Okay. Give me five more weeks worth of content. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you don't have to start over every single time. You can actually use what's already, what you've already built. So, okay. So you answered my question about what to put in. And it's not like you have to be very succinct. Like you literally can just like, vomit <laughs> questions yes. at this platform and it'll give you answers. Um, yeah. So is that when you talk about these custom instructions, is that in the paid and the non-paid versions, both? Yes. It is. Okay. Everybody, yes. It's there for everyone to use. Yeah. Okay. I had no idea it did that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe I've heard that, but I didn't pay attention. 
Um, trying to think of other questions that I have. I think you've answered all my questions, honestly. I'm hoping that I asked them all during the recording and I didn't just ask them all before we hit record. Um, yeah, because we had a great conversation before we got on here. <laughs> we and I think did. that was, it was really good. And, and uh, I think there was, there was a lot to it. Um, but there is so much to chat GPT, right? There's there, but I think the biggest thing to remember is number one, it is, you can think of it as your personal assistant, right? A lot yeah. of people, you know, can't afford to hire someone else or they can't, you know, they, they're in the middle of something and all of a sudden they need some help to tweak something and they, you know, don't have the time to just pick up the phone. Go to chat GPT and ask the question. Mm -hmm. The second biggest thing that I tell people all the time is it's a conversation, it's not a one word, you know, like ask it one little thing and then ask it one little thing and then ask it one little thing. You can actually, like you just said, vomit your question, right? It's about getting your thoughts into the prompt, mm -hmm. right? How would you word it? Like, you know, how would you word it if you were standing in front of somebody that could really help you achieve what you're trying to achieve? What's yeah. that question look like? Right? It can be yeah. multifaceted. You can give it instructions on how you want it to respond. You can give it instructions on like, okay, I'm creating a, I, I need to chart a marketing strat, a, a three, 30 day marketing plan. And I want it to be can, in calendar format. So it's not just in a list. It looks like a calendar. Oh, wow. So, right. uh, so it sounds so, like this is pretty endless and I probably sound like a complete ding dong because I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Cause I didn't know yeah. I did all this because I just haven't paid attention. Cause I just, it was another thing to learn whatever, but it doesn't even seem like it's that hard. It's, it seems like it's easy, easy peasy. But, um, so the one time I did use it, I used it through Uber suggest. Cause that's what I use for SEO. And when I did it, it was, and I'm assuming that chat GPT is the same thing where I plugged in like my topic, which happened to be lead magnets. And I had an outline ready to go. And then I just wanted, and I happened across this feature. And so I thought, oh, well, this is what I'm writing about. And I happened across it as I was doing my keyword research. So happened across where it could generate this for me. And it gave me for each and every like H1 header, H2 header, H3 header, whatever, it gave me options. So it would have like three different options and whichever one I picked, then it would take me to the next three for the next section and I could choose the one I wanted. Then it would take me to the next one and so on and so forth. So it was like this, it created it in a way where I had multiple choices so it took me some time to read each one of them. And I didn't actually like copy and paste them. I used like the ideas and I did my own thing. But I thought that was pretty amazing how I had, and I think this is where we get into don't copy and paste, use your own words, but really research it, like read it, deeply read it so that you fully understand what it's saying and that you agree with it and then use that to your advantage. So it did all the research for me. Probably a custom check, a uh, custom GPT that's been built into the back end of Uber suggests that may not be the the exact um, chat GPT platform. And you can build your own GPT with chat 4.0. That's another reason to have the paid platform because I've actually created my own GPT to help my clients um, really gain an edge on understanding their client avatar, right? So creating that, creating that client avatar and helping people um, really flesh that out. And it goes through a series of questions, right? It starts with the basic question and then just keeps going down until you have your avatar really fleshed out. So yes, you can build personalized GPTs and that's most likely what it was in Uber Suggest. If it was chat GPT, it was probably a GPT that they created to take you to where it would, it would ask specific questions as opposed to you asking the questions and it giving the answers. It reverse engineered it and it's asking you the question. So you fill in the information so it knows, okay, this is, if she answers this way, then I need to ask her these mm -hmm. certain questions. Yeah. Right? So yeah. And that it's was a reverse all engineer. That was all keyword based. So mm -hmm. that was kind of nice because it knew what I wanted to rank for. And then it created the right questions to produce the right information with those keywords and key phrases. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what people are doing with the open AI um, source code now. And I think that was why it was generated in the first place. They wanted everyone to have access to it. They didn't want it to be um, something that only the government or the military had access to. They wanted everyone to have access to it, not just, they wanted to give it to the world. So open AI was designed so everyone could use it. And that's, that's why you'll see so many be, people being very creative in how they're, they're creating their GPTs or different programs that they're offering. And, um, but the biggest thing that I find a lot of people don't understand or don't know about even other um, chat GPT, people that are teaching how to use chat GPT don't know custom instructions exist. And it's a simple feature that everybody has access to, whether you're in the paid version or the free version. And, you know, don't be afraid of using it. That's the biggest thing I tell people. Don't be afraid of using it. Ask it anything you wanted to ask. It, if it's not allowed to answer it, or if it's an inappropriate question, is it going to tell you it's an inappropriate question? <laughs> um, but it is, it's amazing to, to just play with it. But I tell people all the time, make sure that you're fact checking, make sure it sounds like you, make sure you edit it. And it, it really resonates in here. Mm -hmm. The content needs to resonate with who you are and with your ideal client absolutely every time. And yeah. that's what's gonna that's what's gonna set you apart because mm -hmm. it's also going to help you create consistency in your brand. That's why I teach people how to use that custom instructions. It will help you create consistency. You'll stop confusing your audience and you'll make a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. And I think when you say Laura to make sure it resonates with your heart and soul is that that it's got to be aligned with your values. Do not publish content that is not aligned with your values at the end of the day, because that's what your personal brand stands on. So that becomes key. Laura, where can the listeners learn more from you, find you, connect the with easy, you, maybe even hire you? <laughs> the easiest way to find me is at 30secondsuccess.com. I, that's where I, or 30 Second Success on social media. I'm branded very well across all platforms as 30 Second Success. So that's the best way to find me. And, and I'm always interested in helping people to, to improve the brand communications and attract the clients they're meant to serve. Yes, absolutely. And you do a wonderful job of it. And you are very generously giving everyone access to the book. So I will put the link to the book in the show notes as well. So that listeners, you can go and access that and learn more about how to use ChatGPT in your business so that you still sound authentically you. All right, Laura, thank you for being here. And listeners, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends, family, coworkers, anyone else that you think might find this information helpful, especially those who seem to be overwhelmed and spiraling out of control with their to-do list, because this could save them a ton of time and energy. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating and review, my heart would be so full and I would be eternally grateful. All right. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you next week. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review. Ratings and reviews are how we grow and get amazing guests and how more people find the show. A kind review would mean the world to me. Oh, and don't forget, to share the episode with someone that it will help. And let's connect. You can find me on Pinterest and LinkedIn as therobingram.com. And be sure and visit the website, therobingram.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. Until next time, remember to smile.